When you visit a city as a tourist, you might notice a pattern in how you move around. Namely, you have some points of interest, some landmarks you want to check out, and in order to get there, you have to trudge through areas that are just… whatever. In order to get to the few nice places, you gotta go through the boring, often unpleasant places. This usually manifests itself in a friendly, quiet, human scale, but very touristy center, which is surrounded by the loud, disappointing, whatever areas, i.e. the rest of the city. But those areas weren't always like that. They too were once friendly, quiet and human scale, just like the touristy center. But while the center was mostly preserved in its original form, the rest of the city was effectively gutted, entombing it in metric tons of concrete and asphalt, leading to areas that are just… lame, disappointing, unpleasant, dangerous even. But, above all, uninspiring and completely forgettable. If you look at postcard pictures of different streets and compare them to how they look today, you'll note that back in the day the areas had character. They looked inviting, vibrant, pleasant, or at the very least, interesting and memorable. Compare those postcard pictures to the current state of affairs. Those interesting areas are now the same dull, bland, unpleasant, whatever places that you just rush through on your way to the few remaining nice places. That's why city centers are so choked with tourists. They all go there because chances are that's the only area worth visiting as a whole. The only area where you can just be. Where you can hang around and have a good time through that alone. Tourists won't spread out across the city because the rest of the city just isn't worth seeing. Here I'm not talking about the few interspersed landmarks, but the sea of uninteresting, unpleasant dullness around them. The lame, disappointing, unpleasant, uninteresting, forgettable and often dangerous quote-unquote regular areas. Back then it wasn't like that. You could spend weeks, even months, just walking around cities, discovering it bit by bit, observing the locals, getting lost in its urban fabric. Today, why would you? Outside the calm, touristy center, everything is loud, like really loud, the air is polluted and you're just shimmying along the buildings, dodging parked cars and scooters. If you stop to admire the surroundings, people will think you're trying to break into a car or something. Also, and I can't stress this enough, it's hard to really experience an area, its culture, its architecture and its people when said area sounds like this. The building's facades around you might be nice, but the streets themselves are all the same. Car road, parking lanes, narrow sidewalks. 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 Turning over our streets to cars, in my opinion, has caused an even bigger issue than the geometric lack of human-friendly public spaces. Namely, that we expelled ourselves, our humanity, our spirit if you will, from our cities, which used to be the mortar inside the urban fabric. In such disappointing, unpleasant, uninteresting, forgettable areas, we will rarely find any culture, fun, inspiration, social experiences, no memories will be created, nothing interesting will be happening between the patched asphalt lanes and the rows of parked cars. This is a form of urban death, or rather, undeath. Where the streets are still there and people still use them, but everyone is just going through the motions. Everyone is just shuffling past, eyes pointed forward or lost in the screen of their smartphone, trying to push through the area. It's a lifeless imitation of a street, hence the term urban undeath. No longer a place for people, but a traffic thoroughfare to channel people towards the few pleasant places remaining, a few islands in the sea of grey dullness. But it doesn't have to be like that. There is a way to bring life back to a city by deprioritizing individual motor traffic, cars, in favor of everyone else, as in the silent majority. Not planning everything around cars will result in the traditional, human-centric streets and places compact enough to walk or cycle through. This is how every city was built throughout history right until the auto industry bought our politicians and hijacked urban planning departments to build cities accommodating their product instead of people living there. But once you end unrestricted individual motor traffic, once you shift your focus to everyone else, the majority, streets, squares, entire districts suddenly come to life. The city will be full of memorable, inspiring, pleasant, calm, human-friendly areas you can simply get lost in, in a good sense. Where you, as a tourist, no longer just trudge through a sea of forgettable dullness to get to the one nice place. Rather, you're journeying across the city, actually exploring it, getting to know it for yourself. Compare this street in Barcelona to walking down the streets of Prague. In Barcelona, you're experiencing your urban surroundings. In Prague, you're shimmying past cars on a broken sidewalk. 
Of course, I'm not saying that we should turn every street into something out of Disneyland or that every single street will be a bustling cultural hub once the cars are gone. Nor do I advocate for a full ban of motor traffic in cities. After all, essential services, deliveries and trust ban still need to get to places. But in cities with proper public transit, like Budapest, Prague, Madrid, Barcelona, Paris and so on, 90% of private motor traffic is unnecessary. Period. By unnecessary, I mean the driver chose the car out of convenience instead of an actual, uncompromisable need. This is why I advocate for phasing out unnecessary individual motor traffic from inside our cities, to once again bring life to a hollowed out, empty shell of what once was a vibrant urban fabric, so that our cities will once again be living spaces by the people, for the people, instead of open air warehouses for the auto industry's various products. Or, to put it in the words of the highest urban planning experts, car bad. Thank you for watching and don't forget to vote for politicians in your next local elections who care about decongestion and non-motorized transit, who aren't just a bunch of car-centric boomers whose bottoms are 60% Mercedes leather seat via decades of pressure osmosis. See you next time!